Good morning. This But First Coffee episode is a special episode for me because today I am celebrating 10 years cancer-free, which means I am in total remission as of today. 10 years ago, I never would have guessed that this is where I would be celebrating. Uh, but I thought today I would kind of take you on my journey as I went through that 10 year period because it really played an important role in the creative life that I ended up pursuing. So 10 years ago, it was um, February 14th, 2010, that I went in and I had a biopsy done and I had actually found my cancer two years before and I had the doctor that I went to just wouldn't listen to me so um, I just kind of kept an eye on it and two years later I just started feeling like this sense like something definitely wasn't right and so I went back in and I fortunately ended up being in the care of some wonderful doctors who really listened to me and that was really important. One of the first things I did when I found out was I decided to take my kiddo out for ice cream. I decided to go get ice cream because someone once said to me, if something really bad happens, you should go and get yourself ice cream so you can say congratulations, you got yourself through that. It's like a little celebration. Um, that day was kind of interesting for me. My my ex-husband was sitting next to me when I got the news and I think he was kind of in shock. And the doctor who gave me the news, I don't think ever told anybody that kind of news ever before. I think I remember him looking green <laughs> as he told me. So I kind of went into this mode where I started telling jokes and trying to lighten the mood. Like I was needing to be the support system for these two gentlemen that were in the room with me getting this bad news. <laughs> Um, but it wasn't always, you know, a joking time. It was a very difficult time for me. I was somebody who was always juggling lots of things and I had a hard time just letting go and asking for help. And this was the first time in my life I was really going to have to ask for help. At the time, my son was um, seven, eight years old and um, we, he'd spent most of his young life with just me. And I knew that this was going to take a pretty big toll on him. And it did. It did. He dealt with it pretty well. But uh, it was something that I needed to make sure that I gathered resources for him as well as my, myself. So with that said, I ended up having a wonderful church group that reached their arms around me. And I also, um, my in-laws came and stayed with me for a little bit. My own family was really supportive. Um, I had people who were rooting for me from all over the globe and giving me strength. And there were days where I just felt like, I'm never going to get through this. This is the longest day ever, which maybe some of us could relate to right now because the days are taking forever to pass. And at that time, I pretty much spent three months where I was pretty much just confined to the house and the only times I would leave would be to go to doctor's appointments. And that really stuck with me. So some people ask why I teach a medical class when I'm an artist. And it was because of that time in my life. So when I was sick, I literally had such little human interaction, uh, partially because it took a toll on my marriage and it was something where the only human touch I really got was from doctors who were drawing blood or listening to my heart or putting some kind of sensor on me. And I built relationships with those people that helped me really get through a time when I felt very alone. So I, when I was, when I finally moved to North Carolina and I was asked to teach the medical class, I made the decision to do it because I wanted to play a role in training people to treat people, not just an illness. So I, I really feel like human connection was such an important thing. The other thing that happened to me when I was sick is I lost my creativity. I went from being a very creative person who was running a creative business and I ended up um, 
losing my creativity for the entire time that I was on chemotherapy. And that was devastating to me. And I kept thinking, how the heck am I going to get through this? How am I going to get out of this? And honestly, there's a little bit of that kind of reappearing right now when I'm kind of stuck in this quarantine, because there's part of me that has this inkling to create. And then there's another part of me that just kind of feels like in a slump. So I was kind of thinking about the correlation between those two things the other day. But when I decided that I needed to find a way back, um, I've shared with some of you guys before that I stretched out a canvas and I started painting. And I literally went out and I painted every day in my garage. Um, when I did it, I had a canvas stretched on my floor and I would just kind of stretch out because I had to learn how to use my arms again because my muscles were <clears throat> under a lot of strain. And it really helped me. It helped me reconnect with myself and it helped me make this new commitment to myself that I was constantly going to force myself to create no matter what. And even if you're not a creative person, it is a really helpful tool to use because it helps you learn to connect with yourself. So I continued on that path and then I found that what happened with me is that I constantly had this feeling like I was gonna run out of time. So I was doing so many things. And I think that's why even to this day, I do so many things throughout my day because I don't wanna waste a day. Um, you, you really start, when you face the possibility that you may not live, you, you start to really appreciate every moment you have and you put your whole self into it. So I also kind of wanted to talk about some of the other parts of my journey. Um, there are wonderful parts that you can take from going through that and then there are sometimes things that you don't realize that you're going to face that were a challenge. Um, like many people who go through cancer treatment, I lost all my hair. Now I have these lovely locks back which need to be cut desperately but um, there's no hairdressers cutting hair right now. So we'll keep letting it grow for now. But um, so I lost all my hair. And a lot of people said to me when I was worried about that or upset about it, why do you care about losing your hair? Well, when you lose your hair, you realize that there is a part of your identity that is lost. You become sort of this, to me, I just felt like this thing, an unidentifiable thing. And, and until you've gone through it, you probably won't relate. But um, I remember my friends going with me to try on uh, wigs and trying to lift me up that way. And um, the, for that part, it was fun, but it was not fun to wear one. I'll tell you that um, some people might enjoy wearing them, but I did not enjoy wearing them at all. <laughs> um, I think that was the hardest part my son had to deal with. And um, it, it actually, really made it difficult in my marriage because when my hair came back it was like super curly and um you know it wasn't something that he was all that into so <laughs> the curls are now gone though when it got to a certain length i really enjoyed the curls um but that really all of those things that happened they kind of created little i want like little breaks in my heart i guess and I, it took me a long time to be able to kind of heal from that. And during that time, it made me really vulnerable. And I felt like I really had to find myself all over again. And I think that's why I connected with my creativity all over again is because I had to go through this entire journey of introducing myself to myself, which is kind of interesting. And I don't think that I really started to know myself all that well until the last year and a half. I think that's probably when things really started to come together and click for me. But I have done some amazing things in the time since I had cancer. In the 10 years since I had cancer, I have traveled to places I never thought I would. I've made incredible friends. I have an incredible community of uh, creative friends that I just absolutely love and they just they fill my heart and my soul so much and I love creating with them and watching what they do and I've also been able to give back my creativity so I spend a lot of time 
with my art giving back. I've done a lot of um, community service projects and things that I felt like I wanted to take the gifts that I was given and share them with other people. And I'm continuing to try to do that throughout this um, self-distancing quarantine situation. I also decided to give back with my students and still through this process, I'm teaching an online class. So each year I celebrate this day as if it's my new birthday. It's kind of a rebirth. Can't go out and really celebrate today, which is kind of a bummer. But my five year cancer free anniversary was a big deal. I got myself this little ring. I don't know if you can see it, it's an opal. Um, or if you remember that movie, Men in Black, where um, the dog in the movie wore the universe on his collar, I always thought of opals as the universe. And I thought, you know what? For my five year anniversary, I'm gonna get the universe on my hand. <laughs> so here we are, my 10 year anniversary. And I decided, well, I made these cupcakes the other day. So this will be what I'm gonna celebrate with. So hopefully today you can join me in celebrating. Maybe you don't have a cupcake, but maybe you have a cup of coffee or a tea or something. And I'll just cheers all of you for being there. Almost every single one of you have played a part in my journey and I thank you. And today I'm gonna go for my victory lap around the neighborhood so I can get some fresh air and some sunshine. It's kind of cloudy today, but um, I'll still get out and try to get some sunshine. So if you have the inclination to do a victory lap with me, you can do it around your kitchen island or you can go outside and if you're social distancing um, and go for a little victory lap. But I hope you'll join me in celebrating today because today is a really special day for me that I wanted to share with you. So I hope you have a wonderful day.